Hey, what's up you guys? It's Dorothy and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to go into chapter 69 of I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. Um, excuse me, it looks like she's starting to find herself more and more with each chapter that we read. And it seems like she's found the one, but we're not too sure, so let's keep on reading. This video may contain sensitive topics and foul language. If you do not wish to continue, please click off of the video now. You have been warned. Chapter 69. I'm in my living room, sitting on my overstuffed couch. Billy's jackhammering away upstairs. I've been back home in California for three long weeks, and the magical fairy dust of Toronto has settled. My fixation on... <coughs> Excuse me. My fixation on Steven has curbed my anxieties about the quality of non-Netflix show and the overall state of myself, but now without Steven, it's close proximity, the anxieties are back. With this show in, will this show in my career or worse, will it explode into another embarrassing phenomenon that eclipses my identity? What is my identity even? What the fuck is that? How would I know? I pretended to be other people my whole life, my whole childhood and adolescence and young adulthood. The years that you're supposed to spend finding yourself, I was spending pretending to be other people. The years that you're supposed to spend building character, I was spending building characters. I'm more convinced than ever that I need to quit acting, that it doesn't serve my mental health or emotional health. That it's been destructive to both. I think about what else has been destructive to my mental and emotional health, the eating disorders, of course, and the alcohol issues. And then I realize that as much as I'm convinced that I need to quit these things, acting bulimia alcohol, I don't think that I can. As much as I resent them in a strange way that they define me, they are my identity. Maybe that's what I re why I resent them. The stress of the realization draws me to the toilet, just like any stress does, I purge. By the time I get back to my couch spot, I see a missed call from Stephen. Stephen and I became official the day I left Toronto, and my god, was I relieved. I was terrified of our relationship being nothing more than a blip, a fling, something to pass the time that would have otherwise been spent bored in a workplace. That would mean I misread, misinterpreted, was foolish. I was convinced that there was something real between us, but I needed to label to back me up to support my reality. The morning my flight was set to take off, Stephen woke me up with a love letter asking me to be his woman. Leaving him a was true agony. The moment of getting into my cab and saying goodbye was one of the most intense feelings I've ever felt in my life. Shaky, terrified, passionate, and powerless. I had no idea where the future would take us, especially with us being long distance. It's possible that the p past few months have just been a fantasy, a delusion. Maybe Stephen will go back to his life and I'll go back to mine and we'll just fall into our old usual patterns and slowly forget about each other, even with a label. That's why now when Stephen's calling me, I'm relieved. I know what that call means. Last night, while we were on our nightly three-hour FaceTime, he mentioned he was going to look at flights to LA and call me in the morning if he was able to get one last minute because we couldn't stand being apart from each other any longer. This call means he was able to get one. This call means Stephen is coming out to visit me today. This call means our relationship wasn't a fling. Stephen's plane lands. He only packed a carry-on since he's only staying for a couple of days, so he's in his Uber quickly and we text back and forth the whole ride over. I cannot wait. I kick Billy out. He leaves his tools everywhere. When will this guy be done with the refurbishments? It's been over a year. There's a knock at my door. I let Stephen in. It's wild to see him in person after only seeing him through a phone screen for three weeks. We're timid at first. The conversation is slow. I'm terrified. Is this LA us? Was magical us Toronto, USA? Toronto us and LA us is whatever this is. Finally, after the longest three minutes of my life, Stephen grabs me into a hug and we start making out. He takes off my clothes and I take off his, and he takes a condom out of his pocket, of course he does, and pulls it out and wields his condom-clad penis toward me, and I am enthralled. We fuck three times on the couch and afterward we start talking and everything feels back to normal, easy, comfortable, the awkwardness was just the sexual tension, yay. After an hour of cuddling and chatting, Stephen goes to the bathroom to pee. He walks back into the room slowly and with a concerned look on his face, he stops in the archway of the living room, keeping his distance from me. He seems guarded. He doesn't say anything. What? I finally ask. Jenny, Stephen says wordly. What? I ask again, more concerned than, than before. You're freaking me out. What's going on? It's just, Stephen looks down at and scuffs his socks against the hard cherry wood floors. I have no idea what Stephen is about to say. His hesitance is nerve-wracking to me. I just want him to get it out. Do you have a problem? He finally asks. A problem, I ask. Yes, a problem. I'm not sure what you mean. There's vomit residue on the toilet seat. Oh, that's it, I ask, trying to play it off casually. Well, I wouldn't consider it a problem. It's more of just a thing I do. He's not buying it. You know, like, how you 
how you know like how you smoke I try to level it with him you smoke cigarettes and I make myself throw up they're just things we do no they're different Steven assures me believe me I can kill you so can cigarettes yeah but I'm gonna stop right so am I Steven sighs I really just want to, you to be okay and healthy Jenny well I mostly am but you're not but I mostly am he gives me a long hard look he's never looked at me like this before it's pity and par parental I don't like it but there's something to the depth that makes me realize he's not going to budge I'm not going to be able to convince him. Look, Jenny, you need to get help for this or I I can't be with you. I can't watch you do this to yourself. I'm taken aback. Really? His eyes answer back, really? Well, shit. That is the end of chapter 69. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.